Hello and welcome to the first practical video of this course. Together we will explore the main concepts of the ThingsBoard platform and create your first IoT project. A multifunctional dashboard for visualizing and monitoring data from smart devices. In this series of tutorials, you'll learn how to show detailed information about each office, display its devices, and visualize their layout on the room plan. Develop dedicated panels for each device, showcasing both real-time and historical data. And share your dashboard with customers. We will walk you through each topic with live demonstrations. All resources we use in the videos can be found in the learning materials for each lesson. Here's a tip. Whether you follow these tutorials step by step or just observe them first, make sure to practice on your own after each video. This way, you will master the concepts more quickly. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments. So, without further ado, let's get started. Imagine you have several buildings, each containing multiple office spaces equipped with devices that monitor various environmental conditions. In this tutorial, we will add two assets representing office spaces located in different buildings. Office A and Office B. We will assume that each office has three smart devices. For simplicity, we will first concentrate on developing the dashboard for Office A, and then add Office B in the later videos. So let's create our first asset. For this, go to the Entities section and select Assets. Select the plus icon in the upper right corner, and then select Add New Asset. Enter Office A for the asset name. Create a new asset profile. Name it Office and then select Create a new one. Confirm creating an asset profile and finish adding a new asset. As we've added our first asset, let's now create a card with the contact information for Office A. For this we need to add the corresponding values as its attributes. To do this, select Office A, go to the Attributes tab, and select the plus icon. Set address as the key name, and enter its value. The value type should be String. Finally, select Add. Now let's add the Floor attribute. For this, select the plus icon once again, enter Floor as the key name, select Integer as the value type, and input the number. Finally, select Add. Repeat these steps to add the rest of the attributes. You can find their values in the learning materials. Now, as we've added the attributes, we are ready to set up our widget. But first, we need to add our dashboard. For this, go to Dashboard, select the plus icon, and then create new dashboard. Name it Offices and select Add. As you can see, the dashboard has been successfully created and opened automatically. Let's now add our first widget. To do this, select Add New Widget. Select the Cards Widget Bundle, and then select the Markdown slash HTML Card Widget. Now we need to add an alias to define the entities from which the data will be extracted. You can read more about them in the documentation. The link to it is in the learning materials. Select Entity Alias. Name it Selected Office, and select Create a new one. Select the Asset Type filter, specify Office in the Asset Profile, and select Add. As you can see, after adding a new alias, the attributes of Office A are now available as data keys. So add address, email floor, office manager, and phone to the corresponding field. By adding the alias, We've ensured that the widget displays information about any asset in the office profile that has the attributes we added as data keys. This way, if you assign this dashboard to multiple customers, they all will be able to view the information about their own office as long as it has the needed attributes. Now let's customize our information card with code. For this, navigate to the Appearance tab. Here you have two options for modifying the widget. The first option allows you to use Markdown or HTML patterns. To do this, paste the code from the learning materials in the corresponding section. There we will add a title for our widget, 
and display labels for the attributes values. After this step, go to the Widget Card tab, scroll down to the Card button section, and turn off the Enable Full Screen option. Finally, select Add and resize the widget to your liking. As you can see, this option has helped us quickly set up a simple widget, but it could still use some beautification, right? Here's where our second option comes in handy. For a more complex design, go back to the Appearance tab and turn on the Use Markdown slash HTML value function. In the corresponding window, add the value function from the learning materials. In this code, we're creating an information card to display office details. First, we set up the not found message if any of the attribute's values is missing. Then when data is available, each attribute will appear with a corresponding icon and label for easy recognition. A little further down, find the markdown slash HTML CSS section and also add the code from the educational materials. There we set the styling and alignment for the title, icons, and labels within the card. We also customize its borders and set the layouts and colors. Finally, select Apply and resize the widget once again. As you can see, the card now has a more structured layout, as well as a complex design. Finally, save your changes. Now that we have learned how to add widgets, let's practice customizing the dashboard appearance. ThingsBoard allows us to modify it by using layout settings, custom background images, applying CSS code to individual widgets or a whole dashboard, and even more. For example, let's add a custom background image for our dashboard. You can use the image from this tutorial or your own. To do this, Enter the edit mode and select layouts in the upper left corner. Select the gear icon labeled layout settings. Go to the background image section and select browse from gallery. If your desired image has not already been uploaded, select upload image in the top right corner. You can either drag and drop an image into the field or upload it from your computer. Once selected, confirm the upload. Your new image will now be part of the image gallery. Save your new layout settings and ensure that the background of your dashboard has been updated. Now let's round the corners of our widget and add a side shadow to it using custom CSS code. By applying this code to the dashboard settings, the appearance of all widgets we add in the future will also change automatically. To do this, select the settings icon on the toolbar. Scroll down to the advanced settings section. This area allows us to modify complex settings that affect the entire dashboard. In the Dashboard CSS section, enter the code that you may copy from the educational materials. This CSS snippet applies styles to elements with the class ThingsBoard widget that are direct children of the ThingsBoard widget container. It specifies a border radius, which gives the element soft rounded corners, and a box shadow, which creates a semi transparent shadow with a subtle blur adding visual depth. After entering the CSS code, select the Save button to apply the changes. Finally, save your dashboard. As you can see, the widget corners are now rounded and have a slight shadow. In the next lesson, you will learn how to add your first devices, configure relations between entities, and add a widget displaying the list of devices in the office. But for now, Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.